let us pray together. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we pray for ourselves. We pray for our neighbors. Lord, we give ourselves to you this morning. Holy Spirit, come Lord. Speak your word to us. Teach us your truth. And God, fill us with your spirit and your power that Lord, we will mature and grow in you when we will understand your perfect will for our lives. Bless our neighbors right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Are you ready for the word of God? We are back to our church series, Belong, where we talk about building God, this church, building God, the house of, uh, building our church as a house of God. And um, two weeks before the Mother's Day and Pastor Keith weekend, we were actually talking about part one and part two. Let us recap a bit of what is the mission statement of our church. Um, to, our mission is to build a church with strong, let, let us read together, shall we? One, two, go. To build a church with strong spiritual atmosphere where every member is discipled in the Word, empowered by the Holy Spirit to obey the great commandment and cultural mandate as a light unto the world. Just stay here for a while. That we have learned on the first week that we want to build God a house, a place of His dwelling because that is the heart of God that He wants to dwell with us. So the first week we focus on uh, building the church with strong spiritual atmosphere where we desire and we hunger for God's presence in our lives. And indeed, God does not just want to dwell in a church meeting. He wants to dwell in your lives. And we are the church. We are the temple. Amen. Tell a neighbor, you are the temple of God. Amen. Then the following week, we went to MGS. We learned about the cultural mandate and how God is sending all of us to make disciples for Him, not inside the church, but outside the four walls of the church, to go into all the world, to go into culture, to go into businesses, families, religion, to go to your schools, to go to where God has placed you there, to make disciples, not to make conversions, to make disciples of Jesus Christ. That's why we are called to reach out and raise up the next generation. The next generation does not simply mean by age, but the next followers, the next disciples of Jesus Christ in our lives. Amen? So that is essentially what our church is. And today... We want to focus on another part of this mission statement, which is to be discipled in the Word and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Everybody say, disciple in the Word, empowered by the Holy Spirit. In the Bible, we see that whenever the children of Israel, when they encounter God, it was always about building an altar. It was always about building the tabernacle and being aware of God's presence. Therefore, today, as we encounter God, as we praise and worship God, we are actually building the throne of God in our midst where God will rule and He will reign in our midst. Amen? Because God is not building an institution, God is not building a religion. He's not building a society. He is building his kingdom. Amen? Every kingdom has a king. And we are here to lift up the kingship of Jesus and say, Jesus, rule and reign in my life. Rule and reign in our church. Rule and reign in our world. And we acknowledge his authority over our Before Jesus was ascended to heaven, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. Let's read it out loud together. One, two, go. 
And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them, observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus says it so clearly that all authority has been given to him in heaven and on earth. Therefore, he says, go. Today we can go and make disciples because Jesus has received all authority. Amen? Today we go not because you are talented, not because I'm gifted. It is because Jesus has received all authority. And therefore we go in His name. Amen, City Light? We learn how to submit ourselves to God and go as He sends us. It is so important that we understand that we are doing God's work. We are not doing our own work. Amen? It is so important that we, we, we realize that, hey, today I'm serving God. Not because I'm free, I'm gifted, I have nothing to do, better to do. We are doing this because all authority has been given to Him, including our authority, amen? And we say, Jesus, if you send me, then I will go to all nations to make disciples, disciples of Jesus Christ, to baptize them. So last week, if you dedicate, not last week, two weeks ago, if you say, hey, I want to get baptized, we have a baptism in August. Please sign up with us. Please sign up with your life group leader where he will do Bible study with you. So to help you to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. But as you can see, Jesus says, go into all the world to make, to make disciples. It's not to make conversion. So it is not good enough just to be converted. Yes. It is not good enough just to be a believer. But to be a disciple. Friends, I have a question for all of us this morning. Are you a disciple? Are you, am I a disciple? Because before we can make disciples, we must first be a disciple. Before we can be a teacher, we must first be a student. So, a disciple is a student. So the question is so important. Am I a student of Jesus Christ? Is He my leader? Is He my teacher? Because otherwise, sometimes we forget. We think it's all about coming to Jesus and tell Him what we want. It's not wrong. Jesus wants to hear what we want. But we must also understand that we are a student. That we want to learn from Him. We want to become more and more like Him. And that is our goal. That should be your goal and my goal. Isn't it great that all of us have a great teacher, a great, uh, 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 the, the God that we worship is someone who will teach us that we can model our lives after. Who do you model your life after? Is it someone on TikTok or Instagram? Or is it someone on the successful, I don't know, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Tim Cook? Is it a national political leader? Who do you model after? Now, if we say today, I'm a disciple, then the next question should come is that, what makes me a disciple? What makes you a student? Remember when you were a student? Those days, some of you, like, some of us here, like, it was many, many years ago. Remember those days when you were students? You have to wake up early in the morning. Grumpy, and Grumpy a bit, right? What do you do in the morning? You have to pack your bag. And remember, you have to check your homework. You must bring your homework. Have breakfast. Some of you, you remember the breakfast. Okay. Um, those days, uh, our time, if we come from a poorer family, 
The breakfast is in school waiting for us one. The breakfast program. Remember? But I, I, I remember the need of checking all my homework daily. Have I, do, have I done the homework that was given to me? All right. When is exam coming? Yes, there's tests. And oh, I remember today. Today there's BM, Basa Malaysia. You got to bring your Basa book. You cannot bring the wrong book. Remember some students like, they don't bring their book. So they have to share their book with their friends, right? So there are students who are prepared and learning. There are students who are just there. <laughs> I come from a, I must be very careful with what words I use. I come from a very local uh, school, in the only school in my region. Uh, we have 10 classes in our Tingkatan. And I can assure you, out of the 10 classes, probably only two classes are learning. The rest, right, the bags are empty one. There is DVD inside. Uh, what kind of content you know, some you know, guys. Then you have games, you have card games. Like, nobody's really relearning. Just because you wear the uniform, just because you carry a bag, does not automatically make us a good student. Are you following me? So just because we come to church, just because, you know, I sit here and listen, doesn't naturally just make me a good disciple of Jesus Christ. So today, we have got to be intentional. Everybody say intentional. Now, we, we have to be intentional where the teacher teaches us that we, we, we will not complain, hey, this teacher, hey, how come today the hair so messy? You know, the teacher, this one cannot teach one. You know, I don't even know what he's talking about. There is a need for us to desire to learn and say no matter how good the teacher is or not so good, I want to learn as much as I can. You take out your notebook, you look at your, you write your date, right? Today is Sunday. Of course, in school, it's Monday, first week of, first day of the week. This is what is, I need to learn. And before the class, some students, good students, even be, before the teachers come in, they will refer to the previous notes just to refresh their memory. Are you following me? So that is the, that is the attitude of a student. And a student, spiritually, is a disciple. That means, God, I'm serious about growing. I'm not just here to just enjoy, you know, wear my uniform, take some selfie, you know, wifi. I'm a good student. I post it. I'm, I'm there. It's not. We become a student when we learn. It's not when we wear the uniform. When we learn, when we desire. So it requires humility. It requires availability. Okay, you, you, some students, those days, Ponteng school one, right? You know, when they are not available, they don't learn. And it requires teachability. City Light, I pray that we will not be a church that just have the outward form without growing and learning. City Light, we are here to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. That means all of us. You know, I have been talking to God lately. My, my question is a bit childish, you know. Sometimes I say, God, am I a good student or not? Because I feel I'm not. I feel sometimes I remind myself that I'm a pastor more than I'm a student. I got to remind myself again and again and say, God, I still want to learn. I want to learn so much more. I want to have a greater desire, not just to learn knowledge, but I want to know you better. I want to become more and more like you. That should be the desire of every member, every believer, amen, that we want to be transformed to be more and more like Him. I wonder how we handle God's Word because, you know, God's Word is around us, right? You have a Bible at home, you go to Facebook, you, you see uh, somebody post a Bible verse and if you have a Bible app, every day have a verse of the day, you do a devotion, there is Bible, you go to live group, there is Bible, you go to sermon, there is Bible. Everywhere, there is God's Word. Now, there are two ways, I realize, to handle God's Word. One is to use God's Word to fit into your world. I'm depressed. I find God's Word to fit into my situation. I, I need healing. 
I use God's word, find healing. I need encouragement. I need to feel better. I use God's word to fit into my world. Oh, I got, I got exam coming. God, I need peace. You find verses on peace. Am I right? You, you, you know what I mean? Some, some, some of you, you know, you, you are looking for a partner. You read Song of Solomon, you know, like, Oh God, where is my lover? I don't know. Like, maybe you say, God, who should I pursue? You know, look at the names in the Bible. Ah, yeah. God, give me the right names. That is one way of handling God's word. It's not all wrong because there are times we need encouragement. You know what I mean? But I realize there is another way of handling God's word. It is not put God's word into our world, but put our world into God's word. Fit our lives, our agenda, our dreams, and all that to fit into God's narrative. Not fitting God's word into our narrative, but the other way around. And say, God, this is your word. How will you change me to fit into your perfect plan? God, you say you love all the world. God, how can I be the person, a person who will display your love? God, you say that, God, I am your child. How can I be more and more like you? We fit our life. We begin to make changes by the Word of God and by the Holy Spirit. We fit into God's narrative. Which is better? The first or the second? You think, how many of you think the first one is better? How many of you think the second one is better? Some of you are like, I'm the third type. I don't know where it's God's word. <laughs> Alright, so... Second one is the way because God's way are higher than our ways. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. God's word is the perfect word. So you do not want to alter the perfect word to fit into our world. We should alter our world to fit into his perfect word. That's where our lives are transformed. So Christianity is not about transforming the word to fit my needs. It is to transform my lives to fit into God's perfect plan. So a disciple is not somebody that will use God's word for his personal agenda. But it's more like, God, if this is what you say, like what we sang just now, I trust in you, God. I trust in your word. So you see, to make disciples is to teach them to observe all things. Everybody say all things. So it is about learning how to be a student, to observe all things in the Bible. We like it, we don't like it. We must learn to observe all things that we are taught by Jesus, the kingdom values. You know, every time I read the Sermon on the Mount, I read about the Beatitudes, all the words in the Bible, I realize, God, there is so much more. I need you to change me. That is the posture of a student and we are transformed by God's word. You know, in Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. The Bible says that the disciples, they continued steadfastly. That means they were dedicated. You know what I mean? They are committed. They are not just like, this is an interest class. It's not. They are dedicated to continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. That means the teaching of the apostles. What did the apostles teach? The, the apostles teach what Jesus taught them. Jesus taught them and they taught the new disciples. Are you following me? And my you, this happened after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So we must understand, after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, it's not like we just keep pouring out and pouring out and pouring out and outpouring and just stop there. They changed their lifestyle. Now, all of them submitted themselves to the teaching of God's Word. 
Friends, it is great to have the presence of God, to encounter God, to sense His presence and to hear Him speak to us. But it is even more important that we change our lifestyle to be committed to God's Word. And the Bible says here, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and in prayers. Church, that is making room for God. God, we are not here just to have some fun, have a spiritual party, but God, we are committed to be trained by you. That is why we do life groups. Life group is not for lonely people who need friends. Are you following me? It's not like for, I got enough friends already, so I won't join a life group. It's not. Life group is a place of discipleship. It's a place of prayer, of teaching God's word. It's a place of reaching out, amen? And the Bible says that signs and wonders were done through the apostles and they had all things in common. Signs and wonders happened, they met in temple, they met in homes, and then the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Two things that I see over here. Number one, the early church had a great spiritual hunger for God. City like that is that should be our prayer. That is our DNA. That God, we want to be a church that has great spiritual hunger of the things of God, of God's word, to pray, to encourage one another, to have the spiritual discipline that we want to be trained up in the Lord. Number two, the other one that we see, it's a fervent, a deep love for one another, for the people. They actually share their possessions. You know, this is the part that I, I would think like, God, I'm not saying that we should do exactly the same, but I think we should carry the same spirit. If there's someone hungry, we should share our food, amen? If there is someone in lack, no car, we should drive them. If someone that doesn't have a place to stay, we should not let them be homeless, that we will bring them in, put a shelter, that they, they have a place to live. I believe we need to carry the same spirit of the early church. That, that life group is not just a, a, a learning session, you attend class. It's not just a social gathering, ah, we make some friends. This is the family of God. This is where we desire for more of God in our midst. This is where we love one another just as how Christ has loved us. So, I love the life groups, not because that's where we can have gatherings. I believe we are not called to build a mega church with good programs and exciting services. If that is the case, we just need to focus on training our bands and send a few people to be a good trainers. Then you have good programs, you have good services. It's not. But we need life groups to be strong. We need life groups to come together for discipleship, meaning every time there is a big gathering to worship God, where God speaks to us through the pulpit, right? But there is also time that we do tutorial, <laughs> and we do small group discussion, say, hey, I want to learn deeper, I want to know how to apply in my life, I want to share what God is doing. And in that, we learn how to apply you know, those days, I, I, when, when I was young, I, I didn't know the importance of having a tutorial, you know, making it practical. I thought it's all about lectures, lectures. But you understand, you, you realize that in life, it's not just about knowing it here. But if you practice it, because how, how do we love? Unless we have people around us. Love cannot just be a nice concept. It's just like being fit. How to live a healthy lifestyle, I, I guess... If there is 200 of us here this morning, all of us can give a lecture on how to be fit. What is calorie deficit la, you know, eat your salad la, you know, don't eat processed food. All of us can give, right? Because that is lectures. But how do we actually stay fit? It is about practicing it, learning it together. So all of us as fellow students, fellow disciples, 
in the life group. Why not tell our neighbour and say, we are all fellow students. And we desire for God's word because men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I believe in our community is not just having fellowship, but also followership. That means we, we learn how to follow Jesus together. That we want to be strong in the Word and be strong in the Holy Spirit. Amen? Be strong in the Word and be strong in the Holy Spirit. It's not either one, but it's both. Without the Word, we will not be strong. But without the Holy Spirit, we will dry out. So we want to be strong in both. So, the church is not just a concept, a theory, a theology where we learn about it. It is a family where we learn how to live in it and actually walk and take action. So it is a place not just to learn hate knowledge, it is a place to practice, amen? Before you can love your enemies in the workplace, Jesus says, you know, by the way, Jesus says, do not just forgive your enemies, love your enemies, pray for them. That's what Jesus did right on the cross, he prayed for them. So before we can love the enemies out there, you probably have to love your enemies in your life group first. Right? Every time you say this, he say that. Just saying, lah, okay? I, I think your life group don't have such people. Or maybe you have already rejected him. Just kidding. Okay? But what I mean is, it's, 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 in, it's in community that we learn how to love. Because love is not a concept. Love is an action. And this morning, I want to end by sharing this. In Luke chapter 6, verse 46 to 49. Luke chapter 6, verse 46 to 49. Can we, can we read it out loud together? Verse 46, 1, 2, go. But why do you call me Lord, Lord? and not do the things which I say. Whoever comes to me and hears my saying, does them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against the house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who builds a house on the earth without a foundation, against which the stream beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of the house was great. Three things, three things, three actions took place over here. Jesus says, when a person comes to me, which I believe all of us here, or most of us here, have come to Jesus. Right? A person that comes to God. And we all have gone through that. The second thing that took place was this person hears Jesus. I believe in our lives, God has spoken and has taught us with His Word. Amen? And we hear God comes to me, hears my say. And the third part is probably the, the only part that differentiates the two person. One came to Jesus, comes to Jesus, hears Jesus, but did not do it. Another one came to Jesus, heard Jesus, but he did according to what Jesus said. And Jesus said, the first two part is like you have got all the material to build a house. You know, you got God's word to build a house, right? God's word is like 
building material in your life, you know, that can build your life to be safe, secure, uh, to withstand storms and all that. So you come to, you come to Jesus, you hear God's word. That means you have got all the building material already. But there is a problem. The person who hears God's word but does not obey, does not do it. He has the building material, but he does not build it upon the solid rock, which is Jesus Christ himself. But the other person who hears and obeys, that means he does it. That doing is the key to building it on the right foundation. How sad, right? We have got the material. We have got God's word in our lives. But if we only hear it and don't do it, we are building it wrong. We got the right material, but we build it wrong. Because we say, God, you are a good teacher. I'm so inspired. God, I'm so encouraged. Oh, I'm reminded again and again. But until we do it, it is still not the right foundation. And that's why when we see so many believers or disciples, sometimes we see, I, I'm worried myself and say, God, will I be like them one day that, hey God, they were one day, well, they, was my, they were my role models. They were my heroes of faith. God, this person, I'm so inspired. I mean, like, why are they not even following Jesus anymore? Sometimes we wonder, is it because they burn out? Is it because they, they, they face such a great challenges? Uh, they, they just face such, such a storm in their life that they could not wait. But the Bible says that both will face a storm. That means all of us here, we will face rain, wind, flood, storms, because it is inevitable. The only difference is those who hear it and do it, your building is erected on Jesus. That is all that matters. Doing God's work. Every year, students come, students go. But those students who hear the teacher and study and apply and do the homework and do the test will pass. I remember my school those days, you know, so many people just couldn't do well. I pray that for my own life, for ourselves in our church, that we will not just be hearers, that we keep looking who can teach better, which material is better. Do you know there are believers and disciples in the persecuted countries? They don't have the great teaching. They only have some Bible. Then some of them have to share the Bible. I only get one chapter of the book of Matthew. And that's what they read. And they obey. And that's where their faith is tested. And they go through persecution. They are put in prison. But yet, their faith is still so strong. And when they call, Lord, Lord, God says, I know you, good and faithful servant. I pray that church, we are not just looking out for more teaching or more theories, concepts or theology. I'm doing theology, okay? I, I'm not putting, uh, I'm not saying theology is not good. I'm just saying that doing God's word it's the only way to build the right foundation until we obey, until we do it, until there is submission and obedience to God's word. Friends, what is God speaking to you and I today? What is that one thing? Maybe we just start with one thing. What is the one thing that you know, that I know? We need to obey. Perhaps different things for different people. Say, God, 
I still do not know how to obey, but I want to take one step at a time. Whether it is an internal attitude, whether it is a struggle, a sin, or maybe it is it's like what Jojo was sharing, every high thing must come down. If not, maybe it's just my attitude, just my, maybe it is just my openness to God and the Holy Spirit. Maybe it's just my preconception. I think you must work, fit into my world. If you don't fit into my world, I will not accept your word. Maybe it's the attitude that has to go. And say, God, I give you my world. I give you my problems, my burdens. I give you my dreams. How can I fit into your perfect plan? Because we are transformed by the renewing of our mind by God's word. Then we will understand and we will make proof what is the perfect will of God. Amen. So our faith comes by hearing and hearing of God's word. Amen. But you see, faith without works is dead. So we should not just stop at faith. We must also continue with works. The works is not dead works. It is work that is based on the faith through His Word. Amen. So you have the Word, you must have faith, then you must have works that follows so that we can all allow the Holy Spirit to bear fruit in our lives. I want to share with you 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16-18. to 18. It says, Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with an unveiled face, behold, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. You know, the Holy Spirit wants to teach us, wants to show us who God is. Amen? It says the veil has been taken away. And today, we can behold, just as a mirror, the glory of the Lord. What do we behold today? Today, we can obey God because we know He is God. We behold His glory. We know that He is holy. He is worthy. I think a lot of times we struggle to trust in God because we have not seen His glory. And we need the Holy Spirit to help us to behold. And the more we behold, the more we adore God, His light, His glory begins to shine upon us and we are transformed. And I realize in my life, so often I get so busy that reading Bible, worship and prayer becomes a routine. And before I could really be whole, I've already got so many things around me. And I realized coming out from that, I, I'm not transformed because it is the glory of God that transforms us. Amen. So we, 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 we talk to be whole. Behold Jesus. Behold God in our lives. Let's not behold our political leaders, put our hope in them. Let's not behold money, fame, success. Let's not behold our bosses, though they may be good to us, but our hope comes in the Lord, from the Lord. And we want to behold Him. And the more we look at His face, the more we are transformed into His image and His likeness through the Holy Spirit. So did I, I pray for myself, I pray for you, that when Jesus comes back, we really become more and more like Him. That, you know, hey, this is my son and this is my daughter. Not just the adopted one that don't look like it, don't look like Him, but as we journey with Him, though we are adopted, we become more and more like Him because we are in love with Him. We are transformed by Him. Amen. Let's stand to our feet.
I pray that today you capture what God is speaking to you, what God is speaking to me. Can we come to God like a student today and say, God, I want to be primary one again. I want to be excited for you, for you to speak to me. God, I want your word to disciple me. I want your Holy Spirit, God, to touch me, to transform me, to becoming more and more like Jesus. As we worship God with this song, give me faith. Can we just come to God just between you and God and just forget about your neighbor for a while and just allow God to allow the Holy Spirit. And the day that the Holy Spirit came upon the people, they were transformed. Something changed on the inside of them. From fear, they became full of faith. From looking at what is visible, they begin to sense what are the things of the Spirit. Let us come to God and just be open, God. Shh.